We appreciate you both for being here today. I don't see any questions right now in the Q&A or the chat, but I did receive some questions in advance via email. And so I will go to those. And while we anticipate the questions that I know our prospective students have for us this afternoon. So the first question is, can I begin the program in the summertime or all courses offered every semester? Uh, I would be pleased to address that question. Yes, you can start uh, beginning of the summer. Uh, the fact is we offer courses throughout the year. We offer courses in the fall semester, in the spring semester, as well as during the summer. We call it summer term or semester because it's 12 weeks rather than standout 14 weeks. We do not offer every single course each semester. We have, uh, uh, we call it a long-term plan that in environmental engineering, science, and management, we try to utmost, our utmost to offer every single course at least once during the academic year. <clears throat> so that the schedule is online. Some courses are being offered during the fall semester, some during in spring and some during the summer term. So please take a look at it, it's available online. It is called a long-term plan and uh, the courses are being uh, basically repeated each year. There is a specific course that I'm teaching which is required for uh, all the students that they do not have uh, an environmental engineering background that is being offered every semester and that's the principles of environmental engineering. Great, thank you for that, Hetty. Um, another question is with regard to cost. And so I'll take that one. Um, the 600 level courses before the Dean's Fellowship is $5,872. And our Dean, to lessen the out-of-pocket costs, contributes $1,117. So per course, um, it's $4,755. So we suggest students to budget between 48 and 50,000 for the 10 courses, including the cost of books. There are no hidden fees. There's no application fee. The only additional fee you'll pay, and Alex, you'll pay, is your graduation fee, which is $100 um, right, right before you graduate. So there are no hidden costs or hidden fees. Right now for 2020 to 21 to 22, it's $47,550. 78% um, of our students do receive uh, tuition benefits through their employer. And so you definitely want to check to ensure that you don't have a tuition remission and tuition reimbursement set up through your employer. We unfortunately do not offer internal scholarships or fellowships for the graduate programs, um, but I can put a link in the chat that will take you to our admissions and aid page. There are some fellowships outside of Hopkins um, that you can look into specifically uh, for underrepresented minorities, women, black and brown people and STEM and some other outside sources that we host on our website, but we do not control. And I'll put that in the chat shortly. The first question from Kendra in the Q&A is what is the difference between environmental engineering and environmental engineering and science master's program? Uh, wonderful course, wonderful uh, question. Uh, the fact is, uh, let me just go into some details. Uh, the Master of Environmental Engineering, the focus of this area, I'm not talking about the focus area, the concentration, the emphasis rather, is on the design of environmental engineering processes, infrastructures, remediation and treatment processes for air, water, wastewater, solid waste, hazardous waste, uh, examples would be water and wastewater treatment plants design, solid waste and hazardous waste and radioactive waste, landfills and facilities design, incinerators and air emission control technologies, uh, remediation technologies for contaminated sites, uh, environmental biotechnology, and so forth and so on. However, the Master of Science in Environmental Engineering and Science it really stresses on the fundamental concepts of uh, 
just name it, chemistry, physics, geology, uh, biology, as applied to the context of the environmental issues with less emphasis, I'm sorry, with less emphasis on design and management. And uh, just since we are there, we also have the Master of Science in Environmental Planning and Management uh, that really emphasizes on the relationship between the environmental engineering science and public policy with the focus on decision-making tools and policy analysis, as well as uh, an emphasis on the role of economic factors in the environmental, in environmental management and uh, water resources planning. So those are really the differences. Uh, the admission requirements are a little bit different. Uh, as uh, Ayana mentioned, for the environmental, for the Master of Environmental Engineering, you need an ABIT accredited undergraduate degree to get in. And for the other, for the other degrees that is not required, there are just some, uh, I would say, the high level of math, at least, uh, uh, calculus two, and uh, also uh, we strongly recommend having uh, science courses. They are not required, but strongly recommended, such as chemistry, biology, geology, uh, physics, and so forth and so on. Great, thank you for that. I don't see any other questions right now. Alex, why don't you talk to us a little bit about how much time you spend per week on a regular course, on a course that you take? Sure. So the cool thing about the Hopkins program is just the kind of range of different courses that you're able to take and experience. Um, so depending on your background level, you may be very much inside your comfort zone, uh, something that you did your undergrad in and might be you know, two, three hours a week between uh, discussion board posts or homework quizzes or the like. Um, I know I took some classes that uh, were a little bit out of my wheelhouse and some of those you'd be, you know, eight, nine hours working on a homework set, but it really depends on the, the class work, uh, your background with it, and then uh, the professor, how they set up the class and, um, the load assignment that they designated for the course. So um, if to get the ball rolling, probably if you budgeted six, seven, eight hours a week, uh, you know, a couple hours after work here and there, normally I do a lot of my heavy lifting on Sundays and that's kind of how I budgeted my time for it. But that's, that's about the kind of time commitment that you could expect uh, walking into um, any one of these program offerings. in the Q&A, do you offer summer internships for interested students? Uh, the fact is we, we help students to come up with internships. However, we do not have a program, specific program calling, uh, which is called uh, summer internship programs. Uh, so the answer is we try to help students, but we do not have a specific program to uh, basically do that. It's on a case-by-case -case basis. Great. Um, and Kendra, also, I, I mentioned earlier that as a student, you have access to our career resources and things. Most of the REP students are all already full-time employed, but um, you would have access to Handshake and, and alumni access and things like that. So that could also help to open some doors if you would like to make any career changes. Um, do we have any other questions from prospects this afternoon? Now would be the time to- Well, uh, yeah, if you don't mind, Yanos, uh, I take uh, one more minute to just uh, elaborate on something else because uh, I have received this question in the uh, in the past whether a thesis would be required or not the answer is no the program the program the three programs that we offer they are non thesis degree program however there is an independent project in environmental engineering science and management uh, this course uh, 
uh, provides students with an opportunity to carry out a significant project in the field of environmental engineering, science, technology, planning, or management as a part of their graduate program. And the project is individually tailored and uh, supervised under the, the direction, I would say, of a faculty member from the Department of Environmental Health and Engineering. Uh, it may involve conducting a semester-long research project, uh, an in-depth inter, I would say, interviews, uh, literature review. Uh, it is a non-lab study or also application of recent development in the field. So, and also, I just would like to emphasize that they offer 60 cutting edge courses and we only accept maximum number of 19 students normally in a class. And on the average, we take 10 students in each class. Great, thank you for that, Hetty. We do have another question, two questions in the Q&A from Robert. Does the online program require occasional travel to Maryland for face-to-face -face interaction? Uh, our programs, all courses, all programs are exclusively online. So there is no need to travel uh, to take the exams or do projects. Other programs might in AP, but not environmental engineering, science, and man management. We try to do things uh, basically asynchronously. Uh, although there are going to be online office hours that they would be synchronous. Uh, those are the only ones. Uh, and if, if you cannot, if the students cannot attend, they would be recorded and posted online for their future review and use. Great, thank you for that. Don't see any additional questions in the chat or the Q&A. So we may begin to wrap it up. What typically happens after I say I'm about to wrap it up is when the questions come in. So I'm gonna wrap it up slowly. Okay. Yeah. So Hetty or Alex, do you have anything to add before we close out the session this afternoon? Uh, not really. Also, uh, I just wanna indicate that uh, uh, we have, uh, a certificate, a graduate certificate in climate change, uh, energy, sustainability, and so forth and so on, that you might want to consider that as well. Uh, thank you again for your participation, and we look forward to receiving your applications. And if you have any further questions academically, please do not hesitate to contact me personally. My information is online. And if you have any administrative questions, then uh, that would be Ayana and her wonderful team in EP. Yes, yes. And I put the email address for the general. It's not my direct email. It's the admissions team, um, jhep at jhu.edu. If you have additional questions after we wrap the session up, as Hetty already mentioned, we thank you all for joining us. Thank you both Hetty and Alex. Um, for lending your time this afternoon and for answering the questions. We hope to see all of the prospective students online today shortly in our virtual classrooms, and we hope that you enjoy the rest of your week. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Ayana, and thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Take care.